Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crypt News Podcast. We're buzzing as always. And today we have Oliver Gale, also known as Ollie. He's coming back for round two. Ollie Gale, the serial entrepreneur, CBDC pioneer, investor, advisor, and global advocate of distributed ledger technology, currently serving as the founder and CEO of Panther Protocol, an end-to-end privacy protocol for digital assets that can be deployed compliantly on any public blockchain. Ollie also does a whole lot on top of this and we will get into it, but pumped to see this guy back on my screen again. Ollie Gale, welcome back for round two, brother. How you been? I'm good, man. How you doing? It's, you know, coming up the holiday season. And so the team is working away like his business as usual, which is good. But I'm also excited to spend some time with family and loved ones. I bet, man. What a treat. Can you believe it's been 14 months since we last spoke last October? Yeah, time has literally vaporized. Thankfully, it's not been wasted time. In those 14 months, you guys did a couple big things, made a couple big, big splashes. One of them was that you and the team raised 30 big tickets, 30 schmel, always nice, yeah. gives you a nice long runway. And the second thing you just did was actually a couple of weeks ago, and that was V0.5 of Panther, um, which will also lead us down to Roadmap V1. But let's talk about the raise. Walk me through the whole... Again, I've done this a couple of times, but I guess more for our listeners. Walk us through the whole raising process. What's it like from start to finish, going to a bunch of investors, finance boutiques, private equity, whatever the case may be, and raising that money? Walk us through that whole process. Well, uh, from start to finish. So we started raising money for Panther in June 2020. And the first tickets in came from the founders uh, and from like a very small circle of friends and colleagues in the industry. It was about $10,000 and that was enough to get the website, the deck, the logo, and just get going on the idea of putting together a light paper draft, which was actually the biggest ticket item at the time. So we spent six months sort of formulating what Panther Protocol could be. And in January 2021, I took on the CEO role, which, uh, and and my co-founder took on the CTO role. We brought together four guys, to, you know, blockchain architect and engineer, another architect and engineer, and then uh, brought in a head of marketing and a community manager, junior guy. And we started it in, you know, the investor network. Now we raised, Panther is one of the most, one of the largest investor bases for a project between 2021, sort of that, the last cycle, if you will, 2020, 2022. Uh, there are 1,500 public sale investors and 150 private sale investors. So I probably must have had maybe 500 calls with investors in my private network, uh, in my co-founders network, and just referrals to get the private sale done. And that was a raise that was done all through 2021. We raised $10 million uh, that way. And... Then the public sale took place. That was a huge technical matter. We launched to TokenSoft. So we had compliance, yep. it, it's programs, compliance operators, financial. Do it all for you. Yeah, it was, yep. it was doing the whole marketing build up as well that we had to coordinate to build awareness of the sale. And Panther sold out in 90 minutes, raised 20 million US in 90 minute, minutes. Crazy. With, on our forms, our sign up interest forms, we had half a billion dollars of indicative interest from people wanting to invest into the protocol. So we timed it well, we executed it well. There were a number of questions that I would say other protocol teams that had raised a lot less money and had launched a token and then started selling their treasury, their token into the demand of the bull market to build up their treasury. And there were a few conversations I had and the primary thing was, why are you guys raising so much money? You don't need this much money. And the primary answer was, this is my third cycle. I know what it takes to build this technology. A bear market is coming and we need to be able to focus and deliver regardless of- I need that runway, yeah. So that's exactly what we did. And it's exactly what we've been doing. 2022, 
We started the year by launching the ZKP token and basic staking and ramped up from a team of about 15 to we've stabilized between 35 and 40 people in the team now. We've really refined and got a very high quality team, lots of amazing people on that team. And it just in heads down and build. Uh, so Panther protocol itself has a whole new facelift on architecture and structure. We just launched advanced staking and, you know, there's a lot to talk about. Um, so I'm overall very happy with what 2021 and 2022 have thrown up for us. What a ride, man. Happy for you and the team. Like, what did it feel like raising 20 mil in, what would you say, ha half an hour from the public? It was like an hour and a half. I have raised money now of ranging from my first startup was 400,000 US dollars. The Panther raise was the public sale was the biggest single ticket. And no matter what the raise amount has been, it's always felt the very same, which is great. Now I'm responsible for this money. I have to make sure that I get <laughs> yeah. it. Bit a bit of extra weight on your shoulders. There's actually literally almost no joy. I remember after the public sale called up, it was like 30 minutes after the race had completed, we closed off the platform. I called whoa, the team whoa, whoa. up. Ollie, did, did I hear you just say that? You said there was almost no joy after raising the funds? Not for me, that's for sure. Come on, bro. Really? Yeah. No no little like internal fist pump well, or I, anything? I don't rejoice in raising money. I rejoice in giving my investors back a return um, or giving them what I promised them. Very if, true. You know, Panther, the protocol that has utility and can be used by the community. So when that is delivered, that's my joy. That's me yeah. saying, hey, I stuck to my word. I delivered. That's, that's the end of it. Um, and I said to the team, I called, I called up the founding, in, the founding group, same guys that we started with in 2020. And I said, guys, I want to say, you know, congratulations. If there was going to be a moment where you wanted to um, have a drink and celebrate, do that now and let's get back to work. Because you don't, there's nothing to celebrate. Like to, that's not how this works. There are a lot of people in this industry who will take money and then that's it. Congratulations. We're victorious. Maybe we'll deliver and it will work. Maybe yeah, we won't. It's not but if you're a brand and you're building your name, and I've been doing that in this industry for 10 years, and I've been building my brand for two decades, like this thing has to, I need to fulfill my word, deliver. And, and I know my co-founder feels the same. And from there, we have a platform that is now amplified and magnified. And that was one of the reasons that Panther initially chose not to be in an on team because we wanted industry, we wanted, whether it's on the compliance side or the community side, people to know that, hey, we are, we're building this thing and you can look us up. I mean, that, that would have been uh, pretty counterintuitive being a, you know, privacy, pri-fi, privacy finance, privacy tech, you know, based firm slash organization and not being doxed. That would have been bonkers, but obviously you guys are doxed. Um, so we love to see that. A lot Depends on how hardcore you are. If you're a hardcore cypherpunk and you're saying, hey, we're delivering this technology and there's no reference to compliance, there's no reference to anything other than self-serve yourself with whatever level of anonymity you want, then those guys are going to say my right to privacy is mine and I've got nothing to disclose. I, and I have no issue with that. That's just not the path that Panther yeah. is taking is we have a different view on where value is. And more more they, skin in the game. Yeah, I mean, we're like, we have skin in the game, but look at what's happened with regulations this year. Uh, nobody cared a thing about anything that was permissioned or gated in 2020, 2021, because that just friction equals centralization equals no, no real short-term opportunity, put it that way. And that's from a BC or a retail participant investor uh, level. Whereas now, if you look at the theses that are out there for BCs for 2023, and I run a VC myself um, as a private uh, venture studio, uh, number one on the list is regulated DeFi. By a mile. Is that, is that on top of everyone's list? For, for the 2023 thesis statements? That'd be too sweeping a statement. Some people are, 
their thesis is centered around gaming. Other people have a thesis that's centered around infrastructure. But what I'd say is if you're in DeFi and you have a thesis around DeFi, it's well, the regulators want DeFi operators to be licensed. And this has been established globally, which was one of our challenges this year was finding a safe place to, to build and uh, enable the deployment of Panther protocol, advanced staking and basic staking and the token. Um, and, you know, then you look at Voyager, Celsius, FTX, BlockFi, who else? Pow, and pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Right. Domino fall, every, domino fall, crazy. Right, and every single one of those players, who are they? Oh, right, C5 players, exactly. So what's the problem? Well, there are a few problems, but one of the problems is the unscrutinized, irresponsible operations of C5 players and DeFi solves for that. But what neither C5 nor DeFi solve for is the fact that the regulators want operators to follow laws to protect consumers who are exactly, who got um by FTX and Celsius and the rest of them. So this is this is the point. Panther's addressing privacy and DeFi and compliance, recognizing that it's not one position or the other. That's a naive perspective. The reality is they're opposing forces that need to find equilibrium. And the equilibrium of compliance and privacy is different in different environments. So the objective of Panther's privacy middleware is to enable composability and a uh, configurable compliance framework. You could launch a Panther pool in Cambodia, the Cayman Islands, United States of America. Each one of those jurisdictions will have a different compliance regulatory framework in place. Panther doesn't care what it is, it can support any of them. Furthermore, and this is part of the vision that we initially signed up for is we see the pri rights to privacy, rights to freedom of speech should be inalienable rights globally but in a distributed economy and governance framework. And so what we hope to see is appropriate regulation and legal judgment to pass that allow for a completely sovereign fully decentralized, retail accessible shielded pool that doesn't have any sort of guardian in place where the end user says, I'm a sovereign individual. I have obligations to pay my taxes, to obey the, law, the laws and, and operate in a society with order. And I'm going to responsibly manage my sovereign rights to privacy to interact on these solutions. And I'll make the disclosures that I am obliged to make as a citizen. And so that's what we'd like to see because that that's a very important pillar for a safe and free world. And this is all about Panthers V1, right? You guys you guys went live a couple of weeks ago on V0.5, version 0.5. And the whole point of V1 is to allow retail users and institutions and legacy players to interact with DeFi without risking transactional surveillance. Right, it's to be like right. you said, a sovereign individual, and not have every move watched, but also given the level of credibility and the stamp of approval to transact and operate in the DeFi space. That's pretty much the gist of it. That is the gist of it. So, here's a couple of things that I want to discuss that uh, bring some accents to what we see as working in the market. And so, the first is that. Our job as a team is to build the software, deliver the tech roadmap. So we write, the, we architect it, we write the code, we provide some form of open source licensing for the code and documentation for it. And then we release it to the community, the open source community around Panther. And they have the opportunity to deploy it, to amend it, to modify it, to fork it, et cetera. So we have already worked through this year to ensure that we stick to our job which is be a contributor of technology to the open source community and to enable our community to engage in governance and decide what they want to do themselves. None of the founders, none of the team, none of the foundation will be involved in any voting process on the Panther. Now we don't get involved in voting. That's not, that's not the framework that we believe in. So, uh, so the first thing is that technology stack V0.5 
was released to the community and the community went through about five pantry improvement pro proposals to systematically get advanced staking into production. And advanced staking is the final step before V1. Now, what V1 has done, because again, we've amended our architecture, we'll have a new tech and product roadmap out in, let's say January should be feasible. I mean, till January is when we'll release it. So let's say it's January. What Pantry Protocol does is it enables guardians to create zones and each of these zones is a shielded transactional environment. It's confidential DeFi. Uh, it's the ability for the guardian to onboard all of the users into its shielded pool and for that shielded pool to act as a proxy to all other DeFi contracts and to also bridge transactions privately using Panther across chains. There's a relationship of data sharing between the guardian and the user, just like when you use a fintech. So Panther is enabling this multi-zone model. And one of the things we've achieved is the ability for each zone. So the, one of the, Panther pioneered the multi-asset shielded pool, which was an enhancement on other mixers that enables different asset types to contribute to the anonymity set. So in a, like say a tornado cash, ETH contributes to ETH and USDT contributes to USDT and those two don't share any privacy factors. But the first thing we did was we pioneered the multi-asset shielded pool. Now we're pioneering the multi-asset zone. So what that enables is each operator to have their own data custodial, confidential, uh, compliant relationship with their users. None of those users' transactions are fingerprinted to the rest of the world. Everything is on-chain obfuscated. And then we allow that to be shared between all the different zones. You start a zone today and Panther already has a network. You can inherit the anonymity set of the other zone operators, but there is no transaction mixing. So that, like that, that framework right there is a quantum leap ahead of anything that anyone has considered in the privacy space, in the compliance space. And the reason it's a quantum light year ahead is because we're one of the best teams in the industry. We've got the experience building zero knowledge technology, building protocols, but we also have the experience building. I mean, I'll just speak on my own experience and I have an incredible team. Central bank digital currencies, contracts that go straight to government, financial systems, compliance systems, ATM networks, mobile wallet networks, mobile money networks, systematic trading networks, uh, compliance tools, and so now private stable coins are now privacy tools. And I've advised global regulators on, you know, not on how to make the square peg fit the new round hole, but how to actually rewrite and reinvent their frameworks to accommodate for the future. So I'm super excited by multi-zones and multi-asset shielded pools and this ability to bootstrap network effects and also maintain compliance. And I think the Panther being where it is technologically, financially, product wise, is the tip of the spear to be the real mover in enterprise markets. And we think that we'll capture enterprise and uh, we'll do it compliantly, we'll do it decentral in a decentralized fashion, we'll do it safely. And then at some end game state, we'll put everything into the hands of the community and they can decide how they, uh, how they want to enable um, forks or future versions of the protocol, whatever is decided. And then they get to run with it. Hey, we love that. Um, what year do you see this coming to fruition? Now, obviously, again, you guys are head down, building, hauling ass nonstop. Is, you told me 2023 is going to be the year of regulated DeFi. Is this also the year that all of the sort of fruits being bared pop off? This is the thing about Words like all, I don't think all. I do think, and I do expect, and there's also a degree of hope that we will be able to deliver the entire white paper and tech roadmap for Panther Protocol in 2023. If we have to go to 2025 on cash treasury alone, we're good to go. If we include grants, we've gone until 2030. If we include ZKP, 
you can extend it even further. So we're equipped to weather the recession, the bear market, regulatory changes, et cetera. I, I expect and hope that Panther becomes an ecosystem unto itself and that we are joined by other builders that want to build different versions of front-end applications or enhanced tools and systems. For example, two that we are prototyping now are Z IDs and Z votes. So private voting for DAOs, on-chain, off-chain, hybrid models, and also this private identity aggregator slash credential scheme, both of which are required for shielded pools to operate. So the technology essentially is already built into the protocol. What we're aiming to do is if we can ab you know, abstract them out into their own dApps and provide those for the community. But that's like, that's an example. And ideas that, again, you know, like the question kind of is of who's responsible for making these things happen. And the beautiful thing of an open source project is the answer is everyone and anyone. But the idea of a Z suite, because we have Z assets and Z voting and Z ID and Z bridges. So this concept of the Panther Z suite is sort of emerging uh, out of the collective think tank at Panther Ventures and the community. So Panther's building the pools, the bridges, the adapters, the probably, possibly the voting and ID. Those are not on the roadmap, but that's the sort of thing that we look at it and go, how do we create wins? Success is when you, success is how you define it first and foremost. I define success as having integrity to my word and delivering what I say I will which is the technical roadmap, but more than the technical roadmap, it's actually a functional product, like it's something that works, something that adds value. So we're focused on it, everything DeFi. We're focused on shielded pools. We're focused on compliant disclosures. We're focused on multi-chain private bridges. We're focused on DeFi adapters. We're focused on onboarding enterprise into a series of POCs to prove the project and we're focused on decentralization. That doesn't mean that if we can't deliver it, we're not going to deliver on voting and identity. Got to follow the moral compass. Ollie's on a roll, folks. Got to take a quick break. Give a huge shout out to respond to the show. That's Prime XBT. You guys know we love Prime XBT at Crypto News. Longtime friends who have built an amazing product. Doesn't matter if you're a rookie or a vet, you can easily design and customize your layouts and widgets to best fit your trading style. Prime XBT is also running an exclusive promo for listeners of the Crypto News Pod. The promo code is Crypto News 50, that is Crypto News 50, all one word to receive 50% of your deposit credited to your trading account. Again, that is Crypto News 50, all one word to receive 50% of your deposit credited to your trading account. Now back to the show with Ollie. Ollie, you're a big privacy guy. You guys have pretty much coined the term PriFi as well, which I love. I always love a new term or acronym or however you want to call it. The one issue with privacy, and, and I mean, there's, there's a multitude of them, but one of the biggest issues on the consumer facing side is the sexiness of privacy. Humans and consumers as a whole are aware of the downfalls and we use apps like my MacBook or my iPhone that tracks my every move but I still do it because I love the interface. Most of my friends have iMessage. It's just easy. It works for me. It's the cleanest product. In crypto, I can give a million different examples as well. Is there a domino that, that's going to fall or, or, or something that will happen for humans and, and the gen pop and consumers to really start understanding that privacy can be sexy? What can happen there? Yeah, so I think in some sense, it's not necessarily a domino effect. It's more one of building momentum. But when you refer to a domino effect, I think of major catalytic events. And I do think there have been some. You can think of Equifax as an example when hundreds of millions of users were, were leaked through these honeypot data storage systems and it greatly impacts people. There have been other major breaches of this nature over the last five years alone. So I do think when these things happen, you see, you see an accelerant to the process. 
with that momentum building process towards privacy. So you mentioned Apple, and I think Apple's probably the best use case for how what I think is this natural market trend is evolving. So you're right, Apple's got this wonderful interface and they harbor a lot of your data because you're using their hardware and their software so tightly integrated, it's difficult to give up that convenience. And generally what we do is we accept that we are going to trade our information to companies like Apple in exchange for this level of convenience and service. So I don't have a problem with any of that, actually. I, I don't have a problem with any contract two or more parties enter into voluntarily, particularly in public blockchains slash Web3. All of these transaction graphs are on chain and they're public. Chain analysis, elliptic, uh, site for trace, which is now owned by MasterCard. None of these organizations ever came to you or me and said, hey, I would like to fingerprint your on-chain transaction graph and then use it in my big data machine learning models to create insights and sell those for hundreds of millions of dollars to everyone from the IRS to the FBI and law enforcement in between and consumer funds. And that's what they're doing. They just don't ask us. Same thing for Nansen Alpha, you know, which by the way, I have a company that uses Nansen's Alpha service. We think it's great. We'd love to see exactly what whales do and how their portfolios are structured, constructed and what they trade and when they make moves. That's fantastic. Great. We will use it. Why? Because we're operating in a, in a free market and that's where Alpha is. However, what Padler is doing is saying, yeah, so you see this data disclosure? There's a whole subclass of actors that are using this. What you should do is you should enter a confidential or private relationship with some actor to protect your data footprint and to protect that alpha. So right. you can't really change the system by enforcing rules. You have to change the system by changing the way the game is played. Well said. And so going back to someone like Apple, Apple is the biggest marketer on a global basis for privacy and trust. Hey, you know, we've encrypted, we've got relay email servers and we have... Uh, encrypted iCloud, so you can do iCloud encrypted backups, ex iMessage, et cetera, et cetera. Your data is safe with Apple. Your data is safe with Apple. It's a huge marketing campaign. So there's two reasons. One reason is there's real demand from users who are increasingly involved in a digital age, digital economies, digital lives for privacy. 85% of web users wish that their cookies weren't tracked. So there's that intrinsic demand. So you look like an ethical company. And I say look because actions can be different to what you market. You look like an ethical company when you advocate protecting people's privacy. But the other side to the story, which I think is even more interesting, is that Apple is destroying Facebook and Google ad revenue. Slowly but surely. One little knob at a time. It's crazy. If both to survey... Apple users. So Facebook struck target you effectively because Apple is saying, hey, trust us. But what they're also saying is, enter a confidential data relationship with us. We'll protect you from the rest of the market. And so now it becomes a race between Apple and Facebook to who can be more trustworthy, who can offer better security and privacy. So all of a sudden, we're no longer talking about privacy. It's no longer about um, the, all of the hostile, the bad words, money laundering and so on and so forth that are associated with privacy. Now it's about safety and security. Now it's about ad revenue. Now it's about confidentiality. So I think that that momentum is only going to build over the next five to 10 years. And we're going to see that privacy is going to do what it does best, which is fall into the background. It's going to become embedded like security and safety and trust as opposed to privacy and anonymity and crime and so forth. And it's going to deliver on that. And we're going to see most Web3 companies and even protocols incorporate privacy uh, services to meet the demand of users. And also ethical businesses have now a market incentive to be secure and safe and house users' information, protect it on their behalf, because that is what will bring loyalty to your product. So yeah, Panther's sitting in the middle of that and we're just getting ready to launch away global protocol for anyone that wants to interact with DeFi 
privately. Ollie, what a treat. You're, uh, you got to come on more, man. You always bring the noise here. Let, let's talk about some non-crypto stuff for a little bit and we can jump back into it if uh, if we're feeling like it. How's the rap game going? How's, how's your reggae music? I, I know last time you came on, I was bumping your shit for a while. What's new? Any new tracks recently? Yeah. Uh, have I finished any tracks recently? I've got a dozen, maybe two dozen that I've been working on for this album. I went up to LA and did some writing and recording with some great producers and writers, friends. Um, so there's going to be an album in 2023. Really, you know, it's all about juggling priorities and Everything, juggling. Yeah. Certainly music is, it's my passion. It's my journal. It's self-expression. It's brand associated. And I really enjoy it. And I think that people will too. So the, the proof will be in the pudding. They'll have to listen to it and decide how they feel. Um, but I, you know, in my own sense of personal freedom, music is very important. It's something that I'll be doing more of and not less. As a matter of fact, this is my studio. The keyboard's right there. Mic number one, mic number two. The monitors are right there. So I've got my setup to be able to work and play when you're when you're recording, what do you look for for inspo? Like, do you, are you uh, are you a pe- something comes to your mind, write it on pen and paper? Are you uh, something comes to mind, put it in the you know notes app on your iPhone? Um, what, what like are, do you go for a long walk on the beach? I know you're in the Caribbean right now. Like, what do you do f- to get new lyrics or beats or flows pop to your mind? And how do you keep them there? What walking through your whole process? I'm so curious to understand this better. Yeah, that's a pretty cool question. So. First of all, I use my voice recorder extensively. Anytime I'm writing a new song, uh, I will put the voice recorder on for the very first take. The first time I'm listening to an instrumental or a beat, I will put the voice recorder on before I do anything. And then what I do is I just let whatever flows come through. So it's a freestyle. So I'll freestyle a whole song, verses, chorus, bridge, and then I may do that a couple of times. I'll listen back to it. And then I will pick out the sections that I love and I'll write those out, arrange it. And that forms the skeleton of the song. Um, but sometimes I listen to other music and I love the, the rhyme schemes. So I'll write down keywords to expand my vernacular. Around. Well, where, do you, where do you write this? Like your iPhone? Yeah, iPhone, Google Key. Gotcha. Uh, I write songs on the phone so that when I'm in the studio, if we need to record, I don't need to pull out a laptop. Right. You just yeah, hit yeah. a beat. I can write on the phone, hold it up, record into the mic. Song is done. The record's on all the cloud. So it's, it's, it's set. Voice notes are there for reference. So that's, that's like a very on the go because I've been moving and traveling for years now. So it's a very like... I can do this in the elevator. I can do it wherever. Right. Then it's, con- I, it's convenient, efficient. Yeah. Then I go to the studio and that's where we actually lock into recording technique and a push in it. So cool. All that piece is covered. Yeah. The piece, marketing and distribution is the business end of music. And I haven't had time uh, to focus on other business ventures. So I've been building up the creative side of it, that pipeline called that supply. And then I need to, at some point, work on distribution and marketing. And that will come again when I've fulfilled my obligations. That's that's so foreign to just a lot of, you know, investors and, and businessmen and women as a whole. Like being a musician on the side who's actually produced some, some big tracks, to, that's just... Like, you know, for me, I couldn't imagine like my escape is, you know, sports or golf or something, right? Where it's like, I'm not making stuff for other people. When I'm out on the course, I'm there to, you know, have a blast with my mates and to get a little better internally, right? And achieve your goals, achieve my goals. But pumping out tracks on the side, it's just so foreign to me, man. And it's just really interesting. Like, you know, that's that's not an easy skill set to have. I always think of like the famous Drake line. What, what does he say? He's like, you know, musicians and athletes, they want to be them and and they want to be us. You know what I mean? Like, it's always that sort of paradox between the ultra creative and the the madness of sports or business. It's it's cool to think of. And um, 
yeah, kudos, kudos for you doing it. Thanks, man. I think all creativity comes from the same source. And if you can tap into your creativity through some form of art or organic expression, it helps you to be creative with business structures and as an architect or a product visionary or a product designer or a business architect um, or a, a business leader. So I, I feel that I have strengthened both my entrepreneurship and my art by fostering both sides. Yeah, I agree. That is. Ollie, what a treat, man. I know we're getting tight for time. Last question here, Hot Take Factory. I know you always got a couple. Give me a couple Ollie Hot Takes for 2023. It doesn't have to be crypto or privacy related. Can be, you know, health, wealth, happiness, finance, sport, politics, geography, space, AI, you name it. Any any Ollie Hot Takes you got cooking on the back burner? Man. Too many? <laughs> AI 2023, chat GPT, GPT is nuts. There's just a series of them. We're going to start to see the beginning of a hockey stick for human innovation. It's where we've already been on it, but we're going to really start to see this manifest. I wouldn't be surprised if markets get overly enthusiastic about uh, AI and in 2023. That's one, two, recession, US slash global recession. Uh, I think we're in one and I'm hoping by the end of the year, I think we'll start to see the signals, whether it's the Fed, supply chains, energy constraints, where uh, markets will start to turn around. And next year, VC investments will wake up. There hasn't been a lot of investments in crypto, so we'll see a resurgence of investments. We'll see some real gaming companies come out that use blockchain technology. We'll see RegFi, DeFi utilizing compliance tooling will be a big emergent player in 2023. Um, what else is happening next year? Ollie's dropping an album. That'll be fun for me. Um, Spotify Numero Uno, you, you heard it here first. We're, and we're doing the live drop on the Crypto News Pod as well. We'd love to see it. <laughs> right. That's enough for now, I think. I think, you know, 2023, I'm about every year I set an intention in one word because I feel like it's fun and I feel like it helps. So... 23, Michael Jordan's number. 23 is the year of winning. Love that. That's good, man. Ollie, always a treat, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, proud of you and the team. And um, looking forward to having you on for round three. Until then, can you please let our listeners know where they can find you and Panther online and on socials? Yeah, so Panther on pantherprotocol.io or panther.org. We'll be direct there. And Twitter is ZK Panther. Um, on telegram just look for panther protocol official you'll find the chat we're on discord as well through the website you can also link through everything for myself my socials are original ollie o-l-i-i and in uh by the end of this month i'll have olivergale.org up as well so you can link through to everything ollie appreciate you man always a blast always dropping a shit ton of knowledge we love to see it uh, really proud of you guys and looking forward to round three. Thank you, bro. All the best. Folks, what an episode with Oliver Gale, founder and CEO of Panther Protocol. Him and the team are absolutely buzzing. Big ups on the $30 million raise and the launch of Panther V0.5 a couple of weeks ago. Stay tuned for the roadmap to V1. What an happy listeners. Love you guys. Appreciate you as always. Uh, if you like this one, please do subscribe. It would mean the world to us. To the team, love you. And back to the listeners, you guys are the goats. Keep on growing those bags and keep on staying healthy, wealthy, and happy. Bye for now, and we'll talk soon.